everybody good this morning? For anyone that doesn't know me, my name is Jenny Rhodes. I'm the um, Ag Agent, Extension Educator for Ag and Natural Resources here in, the, here in the county. So welcome to our annual Agronomy Day. So uh, we have worked very hard to put together a good program to get everybody recertified, nutrient management, pesticide. We even have commercial pesticide um, today and people that are doing commercial pesticide, we're going to move to a... a um, to the meeting room a little bit later and then we'll have um, also um, certified crop advisors. So make sure if you haven't signed in, get signed in in the back. Thanks to all of our sponsors. This day wouldn't be possible certainly um, without them or our nice lunch anyway. Anyway, um, first I'm going to ask um, Hans Schmidt is here from the Maryland Department of Ag. So Hans going to bring us some greetings from the Maryland Department of Ag and of course, one of our own farmers here in the county, so we're very proud of Hans, and he does a really good job of representing us in Annapolis. Thank you. Well, good morning and greetings from uh, MDA. Uh, Secretary, sorry he couldn't be here. It's hard to keep up with his schedule. He's, uh, he's a wanted man, so he's, he's out and about doing a lot of things. And right now, we're about halfway through the legislative session. Um, and actually, things have been going pretty well, I would say, considering if you compare it to other sessions. It's been relatively quiet for agriculture, which is, a diff it's, which is different from what we were hearing prior to the session back in the fall. Um, we were getting a lot of scuttlebutt from legislators who were concerned, uh, particularly with the progress that the department was making on the PMT and the soil collection. And the department, um, under, the P, uh, under nutrient management, we made, we've been doing some great strides on getting the rest of that data. And I know probably to some of you it may not mean that much, but let me just, let me just explain a couple things. Because we have been making great strides, I really feel that that's one of the reasons why things have been go are pretty quiet right now. There's not a lot of, there's actually no legislation right now or any bills having to do with nutrient management, the change of nutrient management regs, or more cumbersome um, regs and paperwork that you guys are going to have to do. And I think a lot of it has to do with the progress that you as farmers in turning in your data and so forth. Um, right now, uh, March 1st was, uh, you were supposed to have all your AIR data and in, and I don't want to take anything, Howard speaking, I don't want to take anything away from what Howard's going to talk about. But what I do want to say is that that data is important to the department. And I believe Howard's probably going to talk to you about some change in, in some of the regs that we put through this year to make things uh, with, new, uh, with uh, manure spreading, um, trying to look, trying to make it so it was more uh, workable for the farmers work through better through the seasons and so forth. Prior in uh, July 1st of last year, a um, regulation went into effect that restricted manure application here on the shore from November 1st to March 1st. And we worked with a number of advisory committees, the Nutrient Advisory Committee, the PMT Advisory Committee, and a number of environmental groups to come up with some solutions that could make it more feasible and more workable for the ag community. And we changed those dates. We changed some other provisions that I think uh, that um, Howard's going to talk about. But we're, we've got something in place, I think, that's, that's workable, and particularly for the dairy industry. So, um, so those records that you send in the, for the AIR, we utilize some of that data to help us to um, explain why we need to change the regs. Um, when I came into, into this position uh, a little over a year ago, there was a lot of discussion of excess manure. Um, and when the soil data that we've been collecting really showed that there is an excess manure, that the shore and Maryland in general, it does not have a lot of high pea soils. Um, there was this assumption that 80% of the eastern shore had high pea soils. And that's not true. 82% of the of the whole of all of Maryland have an FIV below 150, and about 1.1% of the of Maryland in general has um, excessive pea soils, um, high pea soils. So the data that we've been collecting has been we've been able to use to argue against 
what the assumptions were out there. So again, that's why it's so important to, to send in your data. And uh, we're about 85% collected of, of that piece of data so far. And we're making every effort before the transition goes into a, the transition into the P&T goes into effect next year. Um, just two other, a couple other points. Um, we're anticipating or we know we'll have record cover crop acres this year. We don't have the final numbers yet, but um, I want to thank everyone here for if you're participating in the cover crop program, uh, for those um, for participating in the program and putting cover crops out. It really helps the ag community and farmers trying to meet our, our WIP goals. What I would like to ask you is that one of the thing, new things that we're going to have this year is a new software program for the cover crop program that um, I'm asking for everybody's patience as we go through it. Um, when you go into the soil conservation district offices, um, there's, there's going to be a learning curve. I just went through a training session last week. And so as we go through it, um, there's going to be some highs and lows and some blips along the way. But in the long run, I think it's going to make the program a lot smoother and more streamlined. So as again, I just ask you to be patient. And um, one, other, one other thing I want to mention. We just went through a, a, a number of budget hearings. And the one concern I have is that uh, in the governor's budget, he had in there $8 million for the MAX uh, program. These, this funding is used to pay for capital projects like manure storage, waterways, uh, stream fencing, and so forth. And as many of you may or may not know, that funding was not released, and so we didn't have that money to work with this past year. Uh, we did find a means to, uh, to uh, fund about $3 million worth of projects um, through some other sources. This year, we ha as I said, the governor's got $8 million in there. We're hoping that the budget, the, the legislature is going to approve it. However, the Department of Legislative Services is recommending that that budget be reduced $2 million to six. And right now, we've got about $4 million worth of projects that are sitting on the max, uh, in the MAX office waiting for funding approval. So I would ask that you contact your legislators and ask for the full funding of the $8 million for the MAX office. The legislators need to hear it. And um, when, when we talk to legislators, and I talk to a lot of them, they say they want to hear from the farming community. So I ask if you can make some personal phone calls, some letters, talk to Farm Bureau, talk to your, your legislative groups out there and ask for the full funding. So I think that's all I got. So thank you.